NIU won the MAC tournament last season, but lost in the first round of the tournament to Texas. We had an extremely strong recruiting class once again, with our most notable prospect being four-star center Aki Neverin. With a rotation that's looking even better than last season, NIU is hoping to run the table here in season four and not only win the MAC conference again, but make a run in the NCAA tournament. It was game one of season number four, and we were taking on the Kansas State Wildcats in the first round of our preseason tournament. This would be a great early test for our promising young team as they were taking on a power five school. We had finally gotten to the point with this team as well that coach wasn't coming out with the expectations of just hanging around with them, but fully had expectations of coming out tonight and straight up beating our big 12 opponent in Kansas State. We would finally get this game tied back up with just under four minutes to go in the first, but the Wildcats would get a late offensive surge to close out the end of the first half as we would head into halftime down by five points. We had one surefire way to turn things around quickly this half, and that was our three point shot. Coach Husky had developed developed a team of lethal shooters from beyond the arc over the past three seasons with NIU, and it was paying off for us tonight as we were able to take the lead and extend it over the Wildcats with a three ball. Senior T.R. Radlovic would put us up by our largest margin of six after this three pointer, and sophomore Josiah Sherrod, coming off of an amazing freshman season last year, would increase our lead to eight. Kansas State would finally be forced to foul and send us to the free throw line, and after we would knock down all our shots at the charity stripe, we would pick up the 82 to 75 victory over Kansas State to start season four with freshman center Aki Neverett three rebounds shy of a double-double in his collegiate debut. Our second round matchup was against former MAC team Temple and they would pull off the eight point victory over us ending our tournament run. We would follow that up with an embarrassing loss to Iona but would win our next four games in a row to improve to five and two. NIU was taking on another power five opponent in non-conference play as we traveled to take on the Golden Gophers of Minnesota in the Big Ten tonight. We seemed to get out to a much slower start to this game than than the Gophers did, but Coach Husky still had faith in his team that they would start to turn things around before halftime. It would be huge for the program if we could pull off two upset wins over Power 5 opponents to start Season 4 this year, as that would give us a lot of momentum headed into conference play for us. Speaking of momentum, it had definitely seemed to shift our way to end the first half of this game tonight, as we headed into halftime with a 5-point lead over Minnesota. Unlike our last game against Kansas State that we saw, we weren't playing from behind this time to start the second. All we had to do was keep scoring and not give up easy buckets like this to Minnesota to keep our lead. They would keep it close for a while as it was only a one point lead for us now, but we were finally starting to knock down more shots consistently on offense and doing a better job of getting stops against the Gophers on defense as well. We would eventually extend our lead over the Gophers to 10 points with just over a minute to go and one last dagger on the fast break from senior T.R. Radlovic would seal the game for us as we would get the 15 point victory over Minnesota here on the road. We would finish non-conference play with an 8-2 record as Dino Warren was once again leading us in school scoring. Our true freshman Aki Neverett led the team in rebounding, and Xavier Zuzek was our team's passing leader in assists. We also added two-star senior center Nicholas Butch to our recruiting board, as I normally wouldn't go after two stars at this point, but he had an exceptional potential rating for a two-star. We had also risen to 79% interest in junior shooting guard Alton Fairley, and up to an 81% interest in junior point guard Anthony Skipworth. We were starting conference play at home in DeKalb, and we were taking on the Central Michigan Chippewas to tip it off in Season 4. I think that this team had another great chance at winning not only the MAC regular season title this year, but hopefully repeating as MAC tournament champions this year as well. That definitely wouldn't be happening though if we kept playing defense like we were tonight the rest of the season, as Central Michigan had managed to take a six point lead over us nearing the end of the first half, and after getting to the free throw line with less than 10 seconds to go, they would head into half with a seven point lead. This team always seemed to start games out slow and sluggish in the first half, and it was starting to hurt us now this game as we dropped to 10 points behind the Chippewas. We couldn't keep playing this badly in the first half and hope to win the game in the second half the rest of the year, as we have already seen how good of competition we surprisingly have in the MAC with some of the other teams, and Central Michigan seemed to be one of those teams as they would extend their lead to 11 over us. As we were now doing everything we could and were praying we could shoot our way back into this game tonight, and thankfully that seemed to be the case as senior T.R. Radlovic would get it down to a single point deficit for us, and then on the fast break it would be the senior again who would finally give us the lead over Central Michigan. After a defensive stop and some clutch free throws, we managed to hold on to that lead for a five point comeback victory. But not long after that, Xavier Zuzak would go down with a broken ankle in one of our games, so Josiah Hobbs would step up into the starting point guard role for us for the rest of the regular season. We were without our starting point guard the rest of the season now, so the games might be a little tougher, but Coach Husky still believed in his team. Josiah Hobbs, who was taking over the starting role, had already spent a season as a starter for us, so there was absolutely no cause for concern 
concern around the team with Xavier Zuzak being out. What was causing some concern, however, though, was how poorly we had started this game out against Western Michigan. Once again, our team was off to a slow and sloppy start in the first half of this game, and it looked like we were going to have to play catch up in the second half again tonight against the Broncos, as we would head into halftime down by double digits to them. Thankfully, we would get the second half started with a three from sophomore Josiah Sherrod, and with our three point shooting, we would eventually get it down to just a two point lead for the Broncos. This game would keep going between a two point lead and a four point lead for Western Michigan for a while after that, but we would finally take the lead as Grant McNamara would find Josiah Sherrod for another three pointer on the fast break. Now, all we had to do was keep getting defensive stops and takeaways from the Broncos and extend our lead so we could hang on for the victory here tonight. We would end up doing just that as once again Josiah Sherrod would find an easy bucket for himself and we would go up by double digits over the Broncos with just under two minutes to go in the game. One last three pointer from our new starting point guard Josiah Hobbs on the fast break and we'd get another conference victory against Western Michigan tonight. In the last week of recruiting Alton Fairley was up to 84% interest in the Huskies and Anthony Skipworth was up to 86% interest in us as it looked like we would end up signing Nicholas Butch this upcoming offseason. We would unfortunately be hit with another injury before the end of the season as we were now down two starting players due to injury and our record had definitely slipped in the last month of the season due to that. It was time for our final game of the regular season and we were at home taking on Toledo but we're still missing Xavier Zuzak and Arnaud DeHai in the starting lineup due to injury. Thankfully Xavier would be back in time for the MAC postseason tournament next week but starting power forward Arnaud DeHai will be missing the entire conference tournament this season. So junior Gerard Kita has stepped up in his place and is currently filling that starting role for us. It will be interesting to see how this team ends up performing in the tournament this season. If we can play like we were tonight currently, I don't think we have anything to be worried about as we had a 15 point lead over Toledo headed into halftime. But unlike past teams in this series that seem to struggle finishing games in the second half, we have seen this team struggle to get off to good starts in the first half of games and have to come back in the second half. As long as we don't have to deal with that in the tournament at all, I think we should win no problem next week as this team looked extremely sharp against Toledo tonight to finish the regular season and would pick up the 84 to 69 victory to close out the year. Josiah Sherrod led the team in scoring for season four. True freshman Aki Neverett led us in rebounding and Xavier Zuzak led us in assists this season as he would finally return from injury and would rejoin his team that finished second in the MAC standings this year that would be taking on Ohio in the second round of the MAC tournament. It was the second round of the MAC conference tournament and we were taking on Ohio after securing a first round bye. Just as I had feared, it looked like we were coming out with a slow start to this game against the Bobcats as they had taken and held the lead for most of the first half so far. But we were not waiting until the second half to fight back for the lead tonight. Now that we had taken it back from Ohio, we didn't want to give it back to them. Our defense started stepping up too for us nearing the end of the first half and our lead just kept increasing so far tonight. But Ohio wasn't going away just yet as they would keep fighting back against us this half and we would only have a four point lead headed into the locker room. Ohio would get a lucky bounce on this fast break shot and would score first to start the second half and they were doing a good job of still keeping it a competitive game here throughout this half so far. We would finally hit a big three in transition thanks to Josiah Sherrod but that wouldn't swing the momentum our way for us as Ohio would end up taking the lead with this shot. In what could possibly be his last game with the Huskies, TR Radlevic got it back to a three point lead for us and he would extend it even more with this three point shot off the inbounds pass to him as that shot would secure the win for us 65 to 59 here in the second round and would match us up with Buffalo in the conference semifinals. It was the conference tournament semifinals and a win here tonight against Buffalo would send us back to the tournament championship as we were looking to make it two years in a row winning the MAC with Coach Husky. But Buffalo seemed to have other plans for us so far in the first half of this game. This is the worst game of basketball so far I've seen this team play since season one when we took over. We were getting straight up embarrassed out on defense tonight against the Bulls and on offense even our best shooters on the team couldn't hit an open shot to save their lives. All in all it was an extremely embarrassing first half for the Huskies tonight as we would head into halftime down 31 to 16. Things weren't getting any better for us in the second half as the Bulls continued to outshoot and out rebound us this game. And once we fell behind to the Bulls by 20 points, we knew this game was over for us. Start to finish, we were dominated in every aspect of this game tonight in an embarrassing fashion and we rightfully didn't deserve a spot in the conference championship playing the way we did tonight. This would definitely be one of our most embarrassing losses of this entire series so far as Buffalo would take us down 73 to 40 tonight. They would end up taking on Western Michigan in the MAC championship, which they would also win as well. Despite not making the NCAA tournament, we would still make the NIT tournament this year and would be taking on Marist in the first round. Now, unfortunately, the gameplay footage was corrupted for this game, and we ended up losing a close one, 83-81, that would
would end season four for us. The Florida Gators were your season four tournament champions, and we would be losing one of our top players in TR Radlovic to graduation this offseason. We would, however, get our first transfer of the series in center Zach Israel, a 79 overall from Wisconsin. Two star center Nicholas Butch, who had an A potential rating, would be our only signing this season, and we still had another whole year to try and sign Alton Fairley and Anthony Skipworth as they were both entering their senior season of high school. With all of that out of the way, we are ready to start season five, and for the first time, we're headed into a season ranked in the top 25.